Good evening, everybody. Welcome to November 15 town board meeting committee the whole meeting. Please rise for pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Jeff Renan, first ward. Bill Carlos, second ward. Ann Berger, third ward. Michael Safone, fourth ward. Stefan Krakauer, fifth ward. Ann Shershin, sixth ward. Felicia Salvatore, town clerk. John Bays, the town supervisor. Welcome everybody to tonight's meeting. Before we start, I'd like to um, wish Jimmy Matrando. Happy birthday, being one of our diehards here all weekend. Happy birthday, Happy Jay. Birthday, Jay. <laughs> Sorry, but there's no cake. <laughs> oh, I brought donuts. Yeah. I seriously did. Yeah. So for committee to whole meeting, um, tonight we'll have a presentation from Scott and Lisa Sweeney. Number two will be a presentation from Ron and Denise Donofrio on Central Bark. Um, we're going to be doing the committee to whole meeting first. So first presentation will be Scott and Lisa Sweeney. Scott raised his hand. And just be noted the town attorney, Jim Nelson, showed up. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, Ken Casamento from LRC. Uh, we're the design engineers. Scott was unable to be here in person, but he is on Zoom. So I'm going to share a uh, screen, and Scott's going to be able to uh, talk through the presentation. Can uh, you enable uh, sharing, please? Thank you. <coughs> Scott, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can. There you go. Okay. Uh, do you want me to come on video, or is that disabled? Uh, it's, it's up to the group. No, it's fine. Just where you are, Scott. <coughs> okay. Great. Well, uh, thank you um, to the town of Poughkeepsie for inviting um, Lisa and I to present to you this evening. Um, I do want to apologize for not being able to be present. Um, we uh, happen to have an overlapping family vacation that's been long planned, so um, uh, I'm presenting from Zoom. But um, I certainly thank you for having us today. Um, it's been two and a half years uh, since Lisa and I embarked on this journey with Duchess Roots. Um, and it's been a journey uh, with the town of Poughkeepsie, uh, with lots of communication and correspondence. And um, uh, it's always been our intention to open a, a retail cannabis dispensary and, and be one of the first in, in the area to do so, uh, but, but most importantly, to do it in the town of Poughkeepsie. And, um, and so it, it's really been a pleasure working with many of you to uh, educate uh, all of ourselves on this uh, new use that's coming to the town, uh, and to the surrounding uh, regions and, and beyond. So I, I do want to just start by saying that. Uh, the goal of today's presentation is to introduce you to our brand, Duchess Roots, uh, to tell you a little bit about um, our journey, uh, the location that we've uh, come to uh, terms on, and um, a little bit about the business itself. Uh, being that this is a new business in the town, um, it's, um, I, I think, um, you know, our goal is to be very transparent and open and answer any questions. And, and really, I like to use the term partner uh, because, um, you know, this is new for, for, for everybody here in our community. So um, with that said, I wanted to share with you, you know, our mission, our vision, our values. And I, I wanted to share it with you because I think it's very important. And, and I'd like to read it if it's okay. Uh, so our mission is guided by our passion for customers and community involvement, Duchess Roots is dedicated to creating an engaging, educational and safe cannabis retail environment for the customers of Poughkeepsie. Our vision, Duchess Roots is the Poughkeepsie community's premier source of cannabis products, passionate in its endeavors to inform and educate on the genuine benefits and responsible use of cannabis and to be a distinguished model of an exemplary dispens dispensary in the cannabis industry. And uh, uh, to share our values, our values define who we are and guide our company and business decisions. The foundational cornerstone of Duchess Roots are integrity, compassion, honesty, and inclusivity. Um, uh, Ken, if you could uh, move on. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so um, important to note, Lisa and I uh, have been born and raised in Poughkeepsie, both born at Vassar Hospital. Um, we have lived in, in the area. I've lived in the area uh, most of my life. I'm a fourth generation. Um, I've had a long career in the insurance industry. Um, I grew up in the Spatenkill School District. I'm a graduate of Spatenkill High School and, and Lisa, a graduate of Poughkeepsie Day School. Um, and uh, community is, is the utmost importance to us. Um, you know, we have been on this journey for two and a half years. Can, can you slip to the next slide? Um, as mentioned, uh, born and raised in New York, uh, Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, we currently reside in the town of Poughkeepsie. We are raising our four uh, and a half year old son here. Um, he is uh, first year in uh, universal pre-K. Uh, pre uh, we're excited about that and uh, over at Martha Lawrence. And, um, you know, I've grown up and Lisa's grown up instilled with, um, you know, when you live in an area you're committed to that area and committed uh, in, in the way that you help people and the way that you give back to your community. And, um, and as such, we, we've, we've done a long, we've had a long history of charitable giving and volunteer work, uh, having both of us sat on various different committees uh, in, in the area um, and, um, and volunteered with local nonprofit boards. Um, Ken, if you will. Um, one of the things we wanted to just address um, as we move down this, the slide deck here is that um, we really put a lot of thought and effort in uh, working um, with the town and some advisors of ours to make sure that we were uh, finding a location within the town that would be very thoughtful to the community, uh, the surrounding community and uh, successfully integrate uh, within, uh, within the area. And, um, and um, as um, you know, the town recently passed uh, its cannabis zoning requirements, and um, the, the location that we've um, that we have and uh, are excited about uh, is zoned business highway. Um, it is uh, on Route Nine. It is well beyond uh, the distance requirements set forth by both the state and the town of Poughkeepsie for uh, distance requirements for schools, churches, and public youth facilities. Um, our uh, proposed hours of operations uh, follow both the town zoning as well as the state zoning, uh, no more than 70 hours a week. Uh, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. is the proposed for Monday and Saturday, uh, and then Sundays will be 11 to 6. Uh, it's very important to note that we'll have a zero tolerance policy for any sort of on-site consumption. Um, you know, we've done a lot of research in this market, and um, and, and the most convenient market for us to do that research within was Massachusetts. And um, we have uh, some colleagues and friends that are operating in that industry uh, in Massachusetts and and um, uh, have uh, successfully and, and um, exhibited to us that uh, that is not an issue and uh, it will not be an issue. Uh, we will see to it uh, at our facility. Um, the other thing is uh, the state of New York has passed um, uh, has guidelines not only surrounding uh, the licensure process and, and how that works, but included in there is marketing and advertising guidelines. And um, as within the town zone uh, zoning code, as well as the state um, the state regulations, uh, no outdoor cannabis signage or displays of any kind will be uh, present. Okay, so um, no uh, nothing to signal that. So as we move forward, um, we'd like to just take you through the through the project. Um, tell you a little bit about the site and show you kind of our vision of, of what we um, uh, uh, want to do here. Um, so here's an aerial photo of South Road Crossing. And um, uh, we uh, have been working very successfully with um, the developers of this project uh, and have, a, a, have established a very wonderful relationship with them. And um, we feel that um, building a standalone facility in the town uh, is the best way to introduce this new use to the community. Uh, what better way than a clean uh, new uh, store that can be built to, to, to our needs um, on a, at a convenient location, just, uh, you know, not uh, road front, but uh, tucked away a, a little bit. Uh, so uh, it is a little bit more discreet and not in your face as, as, a, as what we hope to be a first mover. So uh, believe me when I say that these were all thoughts uh, about uh, this. This was, uh, these were um, uh, things that we had heard from the community. And it was with that in mind that we, we, um, we established a relationship with the folks at South Road Crossing and it is our intention to build on that site uh, that's on the screen there 
um, and do so um, in line with the look and feel of, of this development. Uh, um, we, we have an amazing team uh, in Ken and LRC and Jason Litchwick of uh, Jason Litchwick Architecture. And um, we've worked with uh, the, the, um, the property owners as well as um, uh, our team to uh, come up with a design that we feel uh, fits into the, uh, to the landscape uh, of this project, uh, of the overall project here and that will um, be uh, inviting and, and, um, and nice for the community to enjoy. Scott, can I just interrupt for one second? Uh, just so yes, everyone sir. knows that uh, the, the site plan for this project was approved previously with the bank in its location. So the facility itself uh, is located on a previously approved site plan. We are currently in front of the planning board for a site plan amendment to that, um, which does nothing, it, it's a minimal, uh, change in the actual site plan uh, for the building, removing the bank's drive-throughs in that. So for all intents and purposes, everything here was approved. Two of the buildings in the front, you're very well aware, are built. Uh, the home too is, is currently under construction and the fourth building between us and Foam and Wash is coming online shortly. Uh, we'll be back in front of the planning board as they've just started to get tenants as well. Sorry, Scott. Thank you, Ken. No, that's okay. We're proud of this design. We think it's unique. And, uh, but at the same time, uh, fits into uh, the look and feel of, uh, of the site. And, um, um, you know, I will take you through over the next slides. Um, I think it's important for the board to get an idea of what the interior will look, will look and feel like. Uh, these are proposed uh, drawings. So what you're looking at here would be the interior, um, bright, welcoming, well-lit. Um, it's important to note uh, that we will have no actual products um, on the shelves to purchase. Um, they will be sample packaging uh, with, um, you know, um, like a package with cotton balls in it. It will not have any real life product, uh, but it will be able to give the uh, consumer uh, an idea of the products that are, are sold. Um, these, um, I, I always, I guess when I entered this journey, I always use the analogy that uh, there's a cross between a jewelry store here and a and somewhat of an Apple store, um, but we want it to be clean, inviting, and welcoming to all. Um, one thing um, to mention is that the interior will not be able to be seen um, from the exterior. So uh, I will walk you through this, but um, um, there will be an entrance, a dedicated entrance and a dedicated exit. Upon entry into the facility, we will check every single customer in. Uh, meaning that no matter how uh, how the individual looks, uh, they will get ID'd. The ID is not uh, simply somebody looking at the ID and handing it back. It goes through a scanning process and they get checked into our system. Once checked into the system, they're allowed to enter into our facility. Uh, you will see the walls there where where the glass um, the glass frontage is protected by walls. So so nobody uh, from the road will be able to um, uh, uh, look into the facility. And I do want to make sure that uh, you know that it is not our intention to be a smoke shop here. Um, it, you know, unfortunately, with the long rollout here of, of the New York State process, um, the um, uh, you know there's been a proliferation of smoke shops, and we are not going to um, be um, you know leaning heavy on um, glassware and things like that. It will be uh, a very uh, uh, education-focused, consumer-friendly. Um, process uh, where it will be high touch and um, we will work people through this facility as quickly and efficiently as possible and give the people that need the time the time to ask all the questions they need to make sure that we're providing um, uh, the education uh, that's necessary for people to be to be comfortable so important to note and then uh, also important to note that there will be an exit uh, a dedicated exit uh, to the side of the facility and then uh, we'll have our back office. The back office will contain our vault, the break room, and typical things that you would see in a, in a general business, and a fulfillment room. So um, if you think about a restaurant, uh, um, like a diner, where um, the, uh, the, the waiter or the waitress um, uh, puts the order in uh, from the front on a, on a screen, uh, and then it pops out on the back, and somebody's building that order, uh, that's exactly what will happen here. And uh, that order will be then uh, brought to the front of the, of the house. So um, again, just want to make sure that uh, people are aware of that, and um, and that'll be a bit about our process. 
Uh, just a little bit of a timeline. Um, as you all know, um, in December of 2021, uh, or by December of 2021, every municipality in the state of New York had to make a decision whether they would be allowing retail dispensaries or or, or not. Um, and uh, um, the town uh, did uh, decide in December to opt in to allow retail dispensaries. Um, in April of 2022, we uh, came before this board uh, at a committee of the whole meeting and introduced our project at that point, uh, albeit it was very, very new uh, and uh, we were very green. Uh, and, um, and so that was in April of 2022. And then uh, 2023, uh, the, the local zoning was adopted. And uh, here we are today, Duchess Roots has applied and is waiting uh, news on their retail dispensary license. Uh, we have begun uh, here with this meeting, the steps that are necessary to hopefully um, uh, uh, obtain a special permit uh, through the town board and, uh, and go through the planning board process as well. Uh, if all goes as planned, um, and I say that very optimistically, uh, we will hopefully be commencing building of the facility uh, in the spring and, um, and open by the summer. And that is optimistic. And um, I have been optimistic through this whole process. So I'm going to continue to pay. Uh, so um, next slide. Our, our, it's important, our commitment to the town. We're, we're town residents. Uh, we, we, we've lived here for a long time. We have family here, we have friends here. Um, we know a lot of uh, people in the area. And so our commitment is to, is to do this with the utmost uh, integrity and, and respect for, for, for our community. Um, the tax revenue is significant and can be significant here. It's a 3% direct, uh, what I call free cash flow, because uh, in our research, there was no additional fire calls, no additional police calls. Uh, there was really no additional expenses for a cannabis dispensary operating in the town. Um, there was, you know, so the 3% is, is to the bottom line. And um, uh, we, we hope that that will result in a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, annually um, uh, to the town as a result of, of our efforts here uh, at this location. Um, the, uh, again, uh, just to reiterate our safety uh, uh, and, and just to tell you a little bit to make, to make you understand that uh, everybody gets ID'd. Uh, everything that comes into the facility comes in already prepackaged, um, almost like a liquor store. Uh, you, you know, you, you get a, uh, it's already uh, you know, in the packaging, it's, it's child proof, it's tamper proof, and all the products are regulated and tested by the state of New York and their, their testing labs uh, that, they've, that they've allowed to operate here. Um, the, the facility will have uh, cameras, controlled access, and expansive lighting. Um, we as Dutchess Roots will adhere to all of the regulatory requirements uh, set forth by the state and the local municipality. And we, we hope to employ dozens of full-time and part-time employees. And, uh, and we will work with local contractors and local vendors. Uh, we're, we're local through and through. And, um, and um, you know, it, it's, it's exciting to uh, already have people approaching us uh, with uh, interest to, to come work for us. Um, and Duchess Roots, uh, the tax revenue and all that doesn't stop there. Duchess Roots will, will be committed to uh, being an active community participant and helping the town um, and, um, and other nonprofits in the area um, be successful. Uh, that's our motto. And so um, with that, uh, I'd like to close this out by just, again, thanking the town for inviting us here. Um, we've been on this journey somewhat together. Uh, it's been a long road. And um, it's exciting to be close to the finish line. We've put a lot of work and effort into this and a lot of thought. We've taken this very seriously. And, um, you know, here we are. The town's approved this. Um, and um, we, we, we want to do this the right way. So thank you all uh, so much uh, for allowing me to, to speak to you tonight. And, uh, again, I'm sorry uh, I wasn't able to be with you in person. Um, but um, uh, thank you. I'll happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Scott. Does anybody have any questions at this time? No, I just want to say I think the location is a good location, and aesthetically from the exterior, it looks like a nice building. I do like the safety of the building as well, so it's good job. Uh, oh, thank you for all the time and effort and they went. I know you have multiple locations we've looked at and going forward. I know this is still not a done deal until they actually award you your license, so you would be the first. Um, you put a lot of time and effort, and you are local, so... Good luck going forward, and we'll be in touch with your next steps. Thanks. Kevin. Thank you all very much. Thank you.
Our next presentation is Ron and Denise Donofrio. They're here to discuss Central Park, which is across the street in the old um, Goodyear or Mavis building. Goodyear. Goodyear. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for allowing us to present. Um, I'm going to read a little bit, so this way it takes maybe some of the nerves away. So, but again, thank you. I know you all have all recently gone through the elections and everything, so thank you for making the time. Um, basically, we're Central Park, and we're looking to do a whole dog daycare uh, facility right across the street at Plaza 44 where the Goodyear facility was that's been vacant for about 18 months or so. Mm -hmm. We have um, Mr. Michael McCormick, who is representing the actual uh, shopping center owner, um, Capstone 44, Plaza 44, who will be assisting us with any design elements and things of that nature and everything that has to do with architecture. And he will speak right after we are done. Part of the reason why we're here is to talk about the code, referring to the new code, that's Animal Services 21052, which was amended in July and, and uh, then published in August of 2023. Although it's a good co code, we feel that it didn't take into consideration the advent of current doggy daycare businesses um, and also where that can be located. So I know the zoning is not uh, for shopping centers, but in our situation, it's a standalone building, which is a you know um, uh, the best way to have something like this. Um, in today's communities around the country, the definition of whole dog, whole dog care certainly is a far cry from the definition of kennels. That's what comes to mind with everybody who's thinking, oh, it's going to be a kennel. It's the furthest thing from the truth. It's really no kennels. As a matter of fact, the inside our facility, which will be 6,500 square, square feet, there will be actually guest suites uh, where the dogs actually nap during the day after playing in their selected groups. And every, there'll be a, occasional boarding when people have to go out of town. So that's what they are. They're actual suites. They're, they're kind of nice. Um, so really what we like to say is that kennels <clears throat> in today's environment is a little antiquated. Uh, it can represent rescue. It can represent where um, dogs are euthanized and things of that nature, but it really isn't the whole dog care. So there's a different perception out there on what dog day care is. We like to call it whole family care because it really does adapt to the families that have pets. To give you some numbers which are kind of unique is that in the United States right now, there are more households with dogs than there is children. Mm -hmm. So that's a fact that can be Googled through the Oracle and you know, take a look at that, but that's amazing and that's the way it's going. So with that in mind, when you do a code to protect the community, sometimes there might be things that are really different disenfranchising what the possibilities could be for a community that you're trying to protect. So in that sense, um, providing the service to families so they can go to work, so they can run to the hospital, go to medical appointments, uh, do whatever they have to do, and know their dog is going to be well taken care of during the day. With that in mind, uh, socialization and well-being of dogs actually extends their life. So that is a good thing. Everybody loves their pets if you have dogs. Um, I don't mean to do this to everybody, but who has a dog in their household? 
So uh, if you could show hands, okay, one, two, three. Who wants a dog, though? Who wants a dog, right? <laughs> so four, five, and I'm sure there's some in the audience. So you could probably say close to 40 or 50% of everybody you run into has a pet in their home, which they consider a furry family member. So um, basically um, what we also wanted to say is that if we were coming in and applying just for retail space in the town of Poughkeepsie, um, it could be like a Petco or a PetSmart, which comes in as a retail situation, which we wouldn't even have to be here tonight. So with that in mind, then they do, do this not only here, but they do this around the country. Then they add their animal services to their uh, revenue model. So they do grooming just like we do grooming. They have pet supplies just like we have pet supplies. Well, ours will be only dogs, but um, they do boarding, they do puppy sales, they do veterinarian services, they do dog training. These are all things that we do as well. So if we had flipped it where we said that we're coming in for retail, we'd be just like them. So that's where we're trying to do it right. We're trying to say, look, we're a doggy daycare. We provide these services just like the big nationals do. And, and yet, you know, we have to come against certain things that hopefully we can either get an exception to or an amendment thereof and um, go forward. Because time is of the essence for any business person and with a signed lease and with deposits down, we really would like to get going and provide these services to the community. So basically, um, uh, what we what I'd like to do is have my wife, who is really the boss, um, the top be, dog, the top dog, so to speak, do a quick presentation, and I'll just give a little bit about why we're doing this. My wife often stated during the 30 years of marriage that she wished she finished her veterinarian school instead of becoming a business and finance major, but at the same time, it led her to a fantastic career in banking and finance where she's managed over a billion dollars in portfolio and over 600 people. So for her now to do her life's passion, which is work with dogs and, and provide this, we're, we're not just somebody who's coming in here to make money. This We've done that already. We've had a blessed life. What we're coming to do is provide a service for families with pets. And that's really, I think, an important issue when you think about businesses in your community. So uh, for myself, I won't get into me. You know, I'm in a trimester of my, of my life and I just want to be able to still serve and, and, and be able to provide uh, things to the community I live and work in. Currently, I, I, we live in Beacon and um, uh, I, I'm on the assessor board, which is not really a great place to be sometimes, uh, but you know, I do involve myself with it, the community as much as I can. We also participate in all the events and things that go on in, in, in Beacon and the Hudson Valley area. So we've given to the ASPCA for over 30 years every month, and you know that will not wane at all. Um, we've had dog rescue. We, my, our, I have three daughters that also have two dogs in their homes, and two of them are rescues. So we're very, very involved with caring for dogs and caring for uh, our communities where our dogs are now, you can see on every block being walked. So that's kind of it. So I'm gonna leave it, uh, pass it on to my wife. I'm still a little nervous here and I apologize. <laughs> uh, but she's had more, more uh, presentations than I will ever have. So thank you so much for listening to us. Thank you for inviting us tonight. We really appreciate it. Thank you um, so much, honey. We, we've lived in the Hudson Valley for 14 years um, and just fell in love with the Hudson Valley. Um, we also live in, have a, a place in Manhattan, which we go to once in a while, but we're really true, um, true to the heart Hudson Valley residents. And we found a, we think we found an absolutely amazing location in Poughkeepsie. Um, we love this town. I have um, told my sister to stop teaching. She's gonna stop teaching after 35 years. I've been in banking 35 years. She's moving up here from Florida with her husband, looking for property right now for a home in Poughkeepsie so that she can come and join this, this new family business that we're putting together, which is really my life's passion to be with dogs and not just be with them, but make sure that they have an amazing life, that they have fulfillment and enrichment and fun. And we really believe that that's what they're gonna get. If you Google dog daycare in Poughkeepsie, you're gonna come up with WAG and Rover. 
you're going to see private dog walkers, and you're going to see dog training. You're not going to see any doggy daycares. There's one in Millbrook, there's one in Highland, there's one in Fishkill, and these are all relatively new. So this would be the first facility in Poughkeepsie, and actually the first of our franchise in the state of New York. How can Central Bark not be in the state of New York already? The name of Central Bark, of course, says it all. Um, with the play on um, on Central Park. So we're super excited to be here. We feel like we have a great business model um, and we will provide incredible services for dogs and families. And I, I love the whole, whole dog care and whole family care. Um, we're gonna allow families to, I mean, if you, if you ask for a dog walker or if you have someone come to your house, they're probably gonna charge you 25 to $30 to walk your dog for 30 minutes. We're gonna charge roughly around that for a full day of dog daycare which we think is really valu a valuable service, which will help people just have that extra flexibility, knowing your dog is having the best day ever and coming home with a little report card to show you exactly what they did all day long. So we believe we're gonna be able to create at least 14, if not up to 20 jobs, both part-time and full-time with full insurance benefits and 401k benefits. We're gonna do partnerships with the community. We will do partnerships with um, dog rescues and other and veterinarians and things like that. So we're really excited about um, all the different features. So let me just kind of get into the, the real, the gist of this um, endeavor is we decided we wanted to do this business and we needed to find a way to do it. So instead of going and saying we wanted to be franchisees and then figure out what we wanted to franchise, we decided we wanted to go into this dog daycare business and decided that we would select a franchise to help us do it. We would not know where to begin without a franchise really helping us understand exactly what that day should look like for the dog, the nap rooms, the rotation to the carefully selected and curated playrooms based on the size of the dog, the temperament, the breed, the age of the dog. They're all gonna be um, selected with a intensive um, analysis, a behavior analysis to put them in the right play groups. They'll play mostly inside, but we will have outside space, which is completely segregated from even, even anything in the shopping center. It is real, it's adjacent to like a, um, uh, a wall of just kind of grass, if you will, on the, on the right-hand side of the, of the Goodyear. So really excited about that. Um, this franchise that we selected, Central Bark, has done their homework. They've been in business for um, over 25 years with 60 franchises already across the country. We've visited um, seven or eight of these already in different states and have met with many franchisees to see exactly how incredible this is. There was a couple of franchises to choose from, Dogtopia, Camp uh, Bow Wow. We, de we definitely thought Central Bark was the way to go. Um, everything is cleanliness and dog safety. You're gonna see that in everything um, in this presentation. Everything is designed around the health, well-being, and safety of the dog, the dogs, and the um, employees, and also with the environment in mind. This is a mock-up of what potentially it could look like. We're excited to turn this two-year vacant Goodyear space into a beautiful, possibly brick facade um, location that, again, we don't have a rendering of what it's going to look like. It's a little, little, little uh, ahead of ourselves there, but it will be gorgeous, just uh, very similar to what we just saw, like with brick and just going to be absolutely gorgeous. So we're excited about that. And down the road, we're thinking we could possibly invite a veterinary clinic to join us in this facility. Um, we're, um, as Ron said, we made a, signed a lease for 6,500 square feet with 2,000 square feet of outside space as well. Um, so with that, we talked about job creation, um, the health and well-being of um, our employees, making sure that they have what they need, training, tons of training and education, which you get from being part of a world-class franchise. You get incredible training to make sure that everyone is up to date on all dog handling and behavior um, uh, uh, must-haves, including grooming, training, um, dog therapy, there's just a, there's a whole host of things that we'll be offering, including what will look like a beautiful upscale pet store when you walk in. Um, if you think about, like in summary, just we're going to go through some quick slides in a moment, but if you think about um, the commitment of our franchise and ourselves to providing and uh, having an incredible experience for the dogs, we're really excited to be in partnership with Central Bark. And again, we, found, we feel like we found the most incredible community to do this in um, in Poughkeepsie, again, a stone's throw from here. Um, 
you know, dog, like I said, I mentioned dogs will be uh, have a behavior analysis. Not all dogs can go to dog daycare. I bet some of you have a dog that might not be a daycare candidate. Could be an elderly dog. Could be a dog that doesn't like other dogs. There are some dogs that just can't go to daycare, but 90% of dogs that are out there will probably pass our assessment and be um, selected to play in various small groups based on their temperament and their activity level. They'll take naps. They will have meals, they'll get their medicines, they'll rotate to outside play, um, and then of course they'll get picked up and with their little report card be with their owner again who will, they'll tell them about their incredible day. Uh, we'll also have internet where our, um, the owners can look and see what is happening with the dogs during the day if they're at work and they're really wor wondering how my dog's day is going. And that's what I think about all the time. Um, how is my dog, what is my dog doing right now? How is my dog feeling? Is she tired? Is she hungry? Is she having fun? Um, again, we also mentioned there's so many ties into the community with senior homes, we, um, with rescues. Um, dogs just really make everybody's lives better in so many different ways. There's a lot going on with paired industries like Bark and Brews. There's, um, in the city now, there's a lot of uh, restaurants that you can bring your dog and there is a dog menu and a human menu. And you can sit and have a meal with your friends and your dogs, and it's all kinds of fun. Um, so as Ron told you a little bit about us, um, I don't. We, you know, there's a couple of photos here. My little French bulldog really wanted to come and present tonight with us, and nobody can say no to her. She is that cute. Um, but on the right-hand side, you can see a picture of her um, and our boxer that we had who passed away at 12 years old. Um, so we're, we're, just, we're just dog lovers and we believe in, in this um, so much. We're super excited about it, um, about doing this together. And I have managed and led marketing and leadership and with my career, I've done just about everything under the sun to manage branches um, of, of banks, which is very similar to a franchise. As we said, whole dog care is what this is all about. It's about having your dog go home better than when they came in in the morning when they get picked up in the afternoon. Um, the founders of this franchise, Central Bark, are just incredible humans, um, and they're growing this franchise tremendously. There is another 50 on the books to be opened within the next 24 months across the country. Um, you know, some people who work from home think that their dog is happy with their owner working from home, but sometimes their owner is on the computer all day long and they really can't give their dog what it what it needs so we feel like this is great for those folks that work from home or that have to leave their dog during the day so there's there's a lot of things that we will provide to make um, our dogs lives that much more enriched and fun and attending and um, uh, participating in lots and lots of fun activities um, it's all about enrichment as we said and the the dog daycare is just going to enhance the well-being and the emotional and physical form of the dog, with the dog probably being pretty tired when it gets home uh, from the day, but eager to tell its humans about the fun time it had at dog daycare. Um, so sleepovers, not kennels, this is really important. Um, only a handful, a small percentage of dogs actually do board, um, and it's really when the folks and the parents are out of town on vacation, um, but really our business model is going to be a lot of grooming. For those of you that have any kind of a doodle combo, you know that you have to be grooming all the time. Um, and the grooming industry has just completely exploded. Um, so we're really, really excited to be hiring at least two or maybe even three groomers full time. Um, as we mentioned, salon and spa, we plan on sending all of our dogs home with a clean, a clean coat and a, a wipe down before they go home. And if they sign up for a bath, look at the full bath and all the things that go with it. We'll be doing training, um, of course, and a lot of, um, of dog temperament modulation. Um, as we said, enrichment is one of the most important things in a dog's life. Um, and we, we talk about being a happy, healthy, and a whole, whole dog care. Um, so they're not just play, play, play. There's nap times, there's rest times, there's rotation, there's one-on-one -on -one with staff members um, and making sure that the dogs are experiencing the best possible um, environment. Um, we will be doing free puppy hours. Um, which we think is really cool. So uh, once a week or once a month, we will have a social puppy hour, which will allow folks to bring their puppy to Central Bark um, and have a free puppy socialization hour. And we can get to know the, the puppies in the, in the neighborhood. Um, also tons of training, as we said. 
we really feel like there's an opportunity to um, do some dog bite prevention as well. And you, there's just a lot of things that we can do for the community to help the community um, with training and um, enrichment. And we really do hope that you will allow us to bring this incredible opportunity um, and business into Poughkeepsie. And we just really want to thank you for allowing us to spend this time with you. And that is Freya there in the bottom right corner. She, again, wishes she could be here. Uh, but she said good luck to us and woof woof to you, <laughs> Mom and Dad. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to our partner here, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll just say this, um, uh, this is a, a, either a zoning change or a text amendment, and we'll leave it up, uh, certainly up to the town in terms of the legalese and how to make this occur. Uh, from the ownership point of view, this has been a building that has not had a tenant in it for many of a year now. It's in a very prominent place in, in the town at a very important intersection, and uh, this is, uh, could be really, really good use for this building. Uh, when the zoning was formed, it was formed in such a way that this probably was not thought about or could not be thought about because of the shopping center zone, as we all know. And in the shopping center zone, typically you have stores one after another. Well, this is a standalone building by itself, and that makes it unique in terms of the, the potential change in the use uh, for this building. Uh, the, this is a great use for this building. It's a very, uh, I don't want to say benign, totally benign, but it's a very low intense use in terms of what it is. Uh, you'll find that I'm sure that the traffic generation is minimal at best comparatively to what it was. It's something that will not impact neighbors because there's really no neighbors mm -hmm. in the surround. Um, it's, it's really a great place for this type of use. And, and I think that if there is a tax change made, it could Im include this. And of course, with council's input, um, both the town and the, the ownership side, I think we can make this a very easy uh, change to this text so that it doesn't affect every other shopping center in the area, in the town of Poughkeepsie. As we know, again, it's a standalone building. It has some really unique characteristics to this site. And the ownership of the plaza really, really is looking forward to having this part of the community. And again, getting someone, a tenant in a building that has been sit, sitting vacant for many a year. So, you know, not for nothing, vacant buildings are eyesores, as we all know. It shows a lack of really uh, economic development in an area. This will take that place and really create a really good, good sense of community for not only humans, but also dogs. So, in fact, I may go buy a dog to bring my dog to this, <laughs> this facility. Either that or I'm going to go bow wow and go to it because it looks really fun. Please so. rescue one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we look forward to working with the board and council to see how this can occur. And if, it, if the board chooses to go forward, uh, just let us know next steps. Uh, the ownership is ready to prepare and prepare to move forward with their attorneys to work with the town attorneys to figure out how this can work. Well, sounds like a great project. Um, I don't currently own a dog, but I do have a dog that visits on vacation, and I think she would love this. So, hey, I'm all for it. And I go away and leave the dog somewhere safe. I'm happy with it. Awesome. And what we're going to need, we're going to need direction from the board on where to go. Ann's met with um, Central Bark, myself, Mike Welty already, but in order to make the text change, everybody has to be on board on where our next step is. I think it's a great location because behind it, there's actually a project coming in that will have no impact at all and it's really boxed in pretty much in a corner so if there is any noise i mean i've seen the one over in highland it's not as noisy as people think it is once the dogs are loose they're not barking maniacs like they are in a kennel they're free and loose they don't bark as much so i think it's a great location a great use and it's something that's needed because besides fish Guild, the new one and the one over in highland there's really none of that size besides those two Yes, I recently had to put my dog in daycare. Uh, I have a puppy, so sh he needed a lot of ex uh, exercise. Uh, and I struggled to find a place. Um, mm -hmm. And there is a waiting list. There's a waiting um, list. There yeah. is a waiting list yeah. for these places. So um, there is a need. And certainly with um, you know more people moving into the town, people have dogs. And um, you know I do think it's a great fit. I certainly would love to see some development over in that plaza. So um, again, hearing this presentation for the second time, um, you know, I am, I am excited to have Central Bark come and 
we will, uh, you know, put the steps in place to get the text change and, and see what we can do with the zoning department. So um, Thank you. I appreciate you guys taking the time on a Wednesday evening. Thank but um, so but welcome to the Hudson Valley. You know, I love that too. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. that, that you're uh, making yourselves at home here. We love so, it here. Thank you. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? If not, thanks for coming. And we'll be in touch with uh, you. We'll have Mike yes. here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Thank you. Bye. On to committee reports, finance committee. Um, well, we're doing a presentation on the budget tonight. Okay. We'll get that shortly. Mm -hmm. Technology. Yes, we met today, and we had a big jump up of views on our website. We had 11,000 uh, user visits, and that's uh, 9,900 new users. So that's a big jump up for us. And the top five pages were leaf pickups, pay, jobs, ward structure, and uh, um, staff directory. And for our email list, we had 935 new subscribers, which gives us a total of 7,345 subscribers to our email. And some things that were accomplished this past month is some issues were identified with the phones and computers in the courts, the problems were identified and steps were taken to correct them. And also there's a meeting coming up with the ADA to review the ADA compliance of the website and pages updates have been done on the website. And the forms updates for building and zoning have been completed on the website. And we had some new employees, so we've had computer steps for them. And there's been munis, munis updates to the software. And we're going to be getting started with um, munis end of the year reporting. And that's all. Recreation. <coughs> a, uh, again, busy month. Uh, the, first of all, the trunk or treat that they had was very successful. And she just wanted me to pass along. Thanks to all those that participated in there. They also had a pickleball for Alzheimer Association, and they raised about $800 for Alzheimer's that Ray and Debbie Hirsch uh, took up. They wanted to mention, of course, January, I mean, I'm sorry, December 2nd is the Arlington slash Town of Poughkeepsie Holiday Festival. Uh, the route's posted on the Town of Poughkeepsie website and I believe they can speak to the highway department correctly for anybody that wants to participate in that. They've been continuing, of course, the rec department working on all the parks, Rick, still doing so a lot of improvement. You know on that um, holiday event, the event itself is run by the Arlington bid. The caravan, they would see the highway department for the caravan. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I just yeah. mentioned them both. It's, yeah. Time it gives it helped with the, the parade part, the caravan. It's, it's, the route's the same route, I was told, but if you want to look out up the route, you can look on the website and it'll show them the route. Uh, and then, like I said, just like I said, the park, you know, still been, they're still busy, the recreation department, clean up all the parks that we have there, improving, making a lot of uh, beautifications there, painting some uh, benches, dugouts, all that stuff. So they're staying busy. That's it. And Jeff, we're still waiting for um, a contractor for the park on Chief Road. Yeah. They're having an issue. He's way behind. He's working in Hyde Park now, and they probably won't be able to start that project till spring. And also, the other thing there is a. Uh, the art show two weeks ago was a huge success. The seniors were extremely happy with the way that went. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't mention anything about she broke because they said most likely it's going to be a spring event. It's definitely the, everything's here. Everything's in containers waiting, but he's had staffing issues and he's behind, and we're sort of stuck because this was grant money, and we're sort of bound by this person to use them. So we're just holding on. And Jan's been in constant contact with him. Hopefully the weather stays nice and I keep on, keep on working at the park. So yeah. so. Fire advisory. Uh, in our meeting, we just discussed the life safety inspections and multifamily dwellings. Mm -hmm. Basically, the you know regarding who's responsible for most of the inspections and and checking on fire extinguishers, smoke detectors, carbon dioxide. If it's the landlord or the building department, so that's something that that, that we're looking at. Other than that, nothing else to report. Infrastructure, nothing to report. Personnel. Uh, other than with the uh, season closings for recreation, we're going to, uh, we have enough money in our budget to keep uh, the uh, seasonal help working a few more weeks. And uh, as long as the weather holds, we'll have them working for a few more weeks, get us more projects done. So that was about it for personnel. Oh. And the supervisor report, we had our department head meeting this week. Um, highway, water, and sewer are all preparing for the winter. They're trying to buy up um, whatever they can get because they understand the 
delay on a lot of the products they need, whether it's a fire hydrant, a lot of piping. So we've been working on it since like June to get a winter supply. We've already had four um, water main breaks in the last week. So hopefully this isn't a sign of what the winter is going to be like, but they're prepared. They're out. Uh, unlike a lot of other towns, they get a break, they fix it that day and they move on. So we're preparing for the winter and all the departments are ready. Highways all set. They're working on their trucks, getting them ready for winter also. So everything's going, everything's going in the right direction. The budget's on tonight's agenda. Um, other than that, everything's running smooth as this. That brings us to the end of our committee reports. And now we have the town board meeting. Um, the first item on the agenda is a public hearing. The second item is a steering committee for the Hamburg flood study. Item three is a special use permit for Duchess Roots. Item four, authorize the town clerk to authorize bids for mowing, which will be tabled. It's not ready yet. Five, authorize Arlington bid holiday festival. Six, authorize event resolution. Seven, said date for public hearing for unsafe building 195 Vassar Road. Eight, said date for public hearing on safe building 798-802 Duchess Turnpike. Nine, notification of cannabis adult use retail best buds. <coughs> four to 10 Taft Avenue. B. Four Point Industries LLC, 29 Woodlawn Avenue, 10, a notification of a liquor license um, for 2001 South Road. There will also be no notification of Clem Rensberger versus the town. At this point, I'd like to make the motion to suspend the rules for any item on the agenda except for the public hearing. Second. Second. Aye. Aye. Is there anybody like to discuss any item on the agenda? Doreen. Doreen. Okay, thank you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yep. we can. Okay, thank you. So um, I just had a question. I realize this is just for notification number nine, but um, it says cannabis adult use retail, and there's two of them, Best Buds on Taft Avenue and Four Point Industries on Woodlawn Avenue. So those are like already approved businesses, or uh, I have to say I'm not totally familiar no, with the cannabis law. but. Yeah. In order for them to start their application process, they have to give an, an address. And in one instance, we had two addresses for two different vendors. And in this case, one of these addresses happens to be a home. So it'll be up to the cannabis bureau to go through the process because when they come here, they're not gonna get a cannabis license for a home. So this is just their process. I don't know why they're putting in something that doesn't have a lease or a lease agreement or a letter of intent, but you know, we're just accepting what they're sending and it goes on to the Cannabis Bureau from here. Yeah, basically from what I heard is once they get their license, they have a year to find a location. Yeah. So it's kind of weird that they- It's gonna be hard to find, it's hard to find a spot. And if yeah. you follow this whole cannabis thing um, from day one, um, the group that's running it up there, the rules, regulations change and you see how things that were put in place have been taken away or sued and upheld in court. So it's not been the smoothest run operation. You, know, you think they'd need a location? Yeah, it does seem rather confusing, so. All right, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Is there anybody else? With that, make a motion to resume the rules. Second. Aye. All the favor? Aye. 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 Make a motion to open public hearing number one, the 2024 budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is there anybody here like to discuss the 2024 budget? If not, um, a comment from the finance committee? Um, well, I'll speak if you guys want me to speak. Okay, okay. so uh, Stefan and, and um, I uh, went over the budget uh, together and it was a very tight budget. Uh, since you gave us the budget to review, we had some increases um, that you were not aware of at the time. You did your budget and the ambulance service contracts and dial-a-ride for seniors which came in after you completed it. So we looked over the budget. We spoke to many department head employees and employees that wanted to speak to us. What we came up with was um, a way to put some more money into the ambulance budget, save some money and share the costs back to pay for the ambulance service and for dial a ride. So what we looked at was changing the town's health plan to an Excelsior plan, which some of our unions have already vetted the program and they liked it and they accepted it. So we um, gave that to um, our employees in the 
town employees and the water department, and we did hold meetings with all of them. And we are going to go with that, and we are going to give uh, a higher buyout for medical. So if anyone has alternate medical insurance, they can do that. Uh, with the proceeds we've saved uh, going forward, we were able to put uh, roughly $218,000 uh, into the ambulance service and for Dial-A-Ride. And the rest of the money that was saved, we uh, split it with the employees. So um, everybody uh, is, is working hard. The town board did not take any raises this year. Um, and we gave any money that was there back to our employees because we do value our employees very much. We want to keep them working in the town of Poughkeepsie. That's all I've got. The overall increase didn't change at all the rate. And um, it decreased to about 100 k in the tax levy, which is right where you were, Supervisor Basin. Thank you. Anybody on the board have any comments? Make a motion to close the poll here. Second. Polls in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Carlos? Whereas the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie adopted its preliminary budget for the year 2024 on October 18th, 2023. And whereas the legal notice of public hearing was posted on October 20th, 2023 and published in the Poughkeepsie Journal on October 25th, 2023. And whereas public hearings were held on November 1st, 2023 and November 15th, 2023 at 7 p.m. at the Town Hall, Town of Poughkeepsie, 1 over Rocker Road, Poughkeepsie. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby close the public hearing in regard to the adoption of the preliminary budget, adopts the modifications to the preliminary budget as presented this day by the Comptroller, and does adopt the preliminary budget as so modified as the Town's 2024 budget. So moved. So second. Second. Uh, motion second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. So I'll make one comment so people know, by moving the money in the budget and to get the money for the ambulance district, the only one paying for that is the residents in that ambulance district. Even though the money is moved the way the pattern is, the standard 2%, it all goes into one big pot. So that 219000 goes into this, just that New Hamburg ambulance district line Everybody comes out of the other line. So just so people don't think the only people paying for that ambulance service is those people in that district. Okay. Resolution number two. Whereas the town of Poughkeepsie was awarded a grant from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation's Hudson River Estuary Program in 2021 to conduct a study of flooding in the hamlet of New Hamburg, and whereas the town and the state executed a contract for this grant earlier this year, and whereas the town recently issued a request for proposals, RFP, soliciting proposals, qualifications from engineering and or environmental consulting firms to work with town staff and a small steering committee to develop the New Hamburg flood study, the results of which will ultimately be presented to the town board and whereas the town board now wishes to appoint five residents of New Hamburg to serve on the steering committee to help select a consulting firm subject to town board approval and to assist the town staff in guiding the work of the selected consultant over the next 12 to 16 months. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the town board hereby appoints Jeff Renahan, Pam Kingsley, Joan Freeman, Chris White, and Yvonne Williams to serve on the steering committee the New Hamburg flood study. So moved. Second. second. We've got a motion second. Any questions? The only thing I'd like to say, I want to thank Mike Welty for being <coughs> persistent. We applied for this more than once and we got it. There are flooding issues down there that affect the marina, the park, the low rent, the yacht club. And if you look at the list of people on here, you know, besides Jeff and Pam, the Freedmans live on one end, Chris White's involved on the other end, and Yvonne Williams lives on a different part, so all the people down there are involved in this from all different aspects of New okay. Hamburg. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. There is a town board has a... Wait. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's okay. I'm sorry. I forgot to <laughs> <your> open <order. laughs> It's all right. Whereas the town board has received a special use permit application from Duchess Roots LLC for a proposed 
2,762 square foot cannabis retail dispensary at South Road Crossing, parcel number 6060029508000000, located at 2611-2625 South Road in the town of Poughkeepsie. And whereas the proposed location is in the highway business district and pursuant to code 210-61 to the town zoning code, cannabis retail dispensaries are allowed, subject to a special use permit from the town board and site plan review from the planning board in the business highway district. And whereas this application for a 2,762 square foot commercial building is considered a type two action pursuant to CEQA review, uh, seeker and therefore requires no fire, further environmental review. Now therefore be it resolved that the town board refers this matter to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development for a recommendation pursuant to GML 239-M and be it further resolved that the town board hereby sets a public hearing on the special use permit application for December 20th, 2023 at 7 p.m. or as soon as thereafter as the matter may come to be heard in the town hall one over Rocker Road, Poughkeepsie, New York and be it further resolved that the town board directs the town clerk to provide said notice of said public hearing pursuant to chapter 210 zoning so moved second for motion second any questions all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed nay motion passes six one four four i'm going to withdraw as it's not ready yet right. be resolved the town board town of Poughkeepsie authorizes the Arlington Business Improvement District to hold a holiday festival on Saturday, December 2nd. Excuse me, our amended version. Be it resolved, Town Board, Town of Poughkeepsie, authorizes the Arlington Business Improvement District to hold a holiday festival on Saturday, December 2nd, 2023, between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., which application requests the closure of the municipal lot in Raymond Avenue for the holiday festival shopping village. And be it further resolved, the town board further approves the holiday parade on Saturday, December 2nd, 2023, between 4.45 p.m. and 6 p.m. in the closure of Davis Avenue from Fowler Avenue to Raymond Avenue, Raymond Avenue from eastbound Route 4455 intersection to College View, Fulton Avenue roundabout, and the College View Avenue from roundabout to Vassar College North parking lot for said parade. To be a further resolved, the Town Board Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby waive the provisions of the noise ordinance in regards to the holiday festival between the hours of 10 and 6 p.m. on December 2nd, 2023. And be a further resolved that the Town Board of Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby waive all permit fees relating to the holiday festival on December 2nd, 2023, pursuant to the request of the Arlington Business Improvement District dated November 8th, 2023, a copy of which is attached. Be it further, further resolved that the town clerk is in receipt of certificate of liability insurance naming the town as an additional insurance. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion is second. Any questions on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Be it resolved, the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby approve the applications received on file in the office of the town clerk as follows. One, the 42nd annual Peter Sanfilippo Memorial Holiday Run to be held at the Knights Columbus 2660 East Main Street, Wapchers Falls, New York, on Saturday, December 2nd, 2023, between the hours of 9.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. Two 5K fun run walk to be held entirely within the Vassar College campus on Saturday, November 18th, 2023 at 11 a.m. Be it further resolved the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie is hereby approved the application as the town clerk is in receipt of, the, of a certificate of liability insurance name in the town of Poughkeepsie as an additional insured for the dates of the event. So moved. Second. Well, motion second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Good luck. Whereas by resolution 216, number two of 2022, adopted on February 16th of 2022, the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie has determined the premises and buildings located at 195 Vassar Road, Poughkeepsie, County of Dutchess, State of New York, bearing grid number 6159-01-469860, the premise. The owner of record being Kenneth Walt Walters are dangerous, unsafe, and dilapidated, and an imminent threat uh, to the general public. And whereas the town board has adopted building department's unsafe building investigation report dated January 27, 2022, regarding the premise and directed the issuance of an order or a notice requiring the demolition or repair of the premise and the setting of a public hearing regarding the order and notice, and whereas a legal notice of public hearing was posted on February 17, 2022, and published in the Poughkeepsie Journal on March 9th of 2022, and whereas a public hearing for this matter was held on March 
2022 and whereas a resolution 3 26-1 of 2022 adopted on March 23rd of 2022. The Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie authorized and directed the building department to demolish and remove the building in accordance to Town Code 71-10 and to thereafter assess against the premise and levy and collect expenses of the same as provided in Article 15 of the Town Law for the levy and collection of special avalorum Levy in the event the owner has not timely commenced and completed the repair or demolition of the building and whereas the owner has failed to take any immediation action to commence or complete the repair or demolition of the building and whereas the premise remains dangerous, unsafe, and dilapidated and an imminent threat to the public, general public and whereas as reflected in the annexed affidavit of the building inspector, the premise remains dangerous, unsafe, dilapidated, and an imminent threat to the general public. And whereas in order to ensure any unpaid expenses incurred by the town to demolish the premise, which must be performed at prevailing wage rates and may be added to the tax rolls, the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie in accordance to 71-10 authorizes and directs the building department to demolish and remove the building in accordance with 71-10 of the town code and whereas the town board authorized bids which would are being provisionally procured in accordance to chapter 71 now therefore it be resolved that a public hearing on the order and notice including the recovery levy and collection of the town's expenses as an avalorum levy will be held before the town board on December 6, 2023 at 7 p.m. at the town hall, town of Poughkeepsie, 1 over Rockwell Road, Poughkeepsie, New York, be further resolved that at this work is an enforcement proceeding and is therefore a type two action, which is exempt from environmental review under 6 NYCRR 617.5 C 29, so moved. Second. Second. Motion. Any questions? The reason this is back, we had to figure out how to get in and get the demolition permit in place. And being at either one of these buildings, this or the next one could possibly have asbestos in it. It took a lot longer. And just to cover ourselves, we want to make sure we bring it back out so we don't get anywhere. It's out, it's fresh, and it's done. And as this process is going through, the bids will also go out. So when it comes back and we go through the public hearing, we'll be able to take the building. So. Wasn't this the one with the pool too? No, the pool's in the front. The pool's the one that caught fire. Okay. The, it's the house behind her, down by the oh, creek. Oh, it's the house behind it's the down, pool. It's what? basically imploded from the inside. Just look inside. The insides are down. The owner's going in to try to take some stuff out, but he's like lost. We, we can't get a hold of him. Every time you write, told me he doesn't get a hold of him. Yeah. yeah. Opposed in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Did you say that? Did you say yes? No, we say yes. Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Number Resolution eight. 1115, number 8. Mm -hmm. That's okay. where we're at. I got 8. Whereas by resolution... Oh, Jay's got 8. I got 8. Oh, you got it? Okay. Whereas by resolution 520, number 4 of 2015, adopted on May 20, 2015, the Town Board of Town of Poughkeepsie has determined that the premises and building located at 798 to 802 Dutchess Turnpike, Poughkeepsie, County Dutchess, State of New York, bearing grid number 6262045710014, the premises... The owner of record being Malabar Realty, LLC, 96 Oregon Road, Portland Manor, New York, 10507, are dangerous, unsafe, and dilapidated, and imminent threat to the general public. In other the town board has adopted the building's department unsafe investigation report dated April 15, 2015, regarding the premises and directed the issuance of an order notice requiring a demolition or repair of the premises in the setting of a public hearing regarding the order notice. And whereas a legal notice of public hearing was posted on May 21, 2015, published in a journal on May 25th, 2015, whereas a public hearing for this matter was held on June 3rd, 2015, whereas resolution 63, number one of 2015, adopted on June 3rd, 2015, the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie authorized and directed the building department to demolish and remove the building in accordance with town code 7110 and to thereafter assess the premises and levy and collect expenses as same as provided in article 15 of town law for the levy and collection of a special ad valorem levy in the event the owner has not timely commenced or completed the repair or demolition of the building. And whereas by correspondence to the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie dated 
January 27, 2016, the building department informed the town board that the only dangerous condition in the premises had been minimally corrected was filling of a large hole in front of the primary structure and none of the remaining conditions that make the site dangerous, unsafe, and dilapidated have been addressed. Whereas the owner has since failed to take any remedial action to commence and complete the repair or demolition of the building. And whereas as reflected in the annexed affidavit of the building inspector, the premises remain dangerous, unsafe, and dilapidated and an imminent threat to the general public. And whereas in order to assure that any unpaid expenses incurred by the town to demolish the premises, which must be performed to prevailing wage rates, may be added to the tax rolls, the town board of town of Poughkeepsie in accordance with chapter 71-10 authorizes and directs the building department to demolish and remove the building in accordance with chapter 71-10 of the town code. And whereas the town board is authorized bids, which are being provisionally procured in accordance with chapter 71. Now, therefore, be resolved that a public hearing and order of notice, including recovery, levy, and collection of town expenses at an ad valorem levy, will be held before the town board on December 6, 2023, at 7 p.m. at Town Hall, Town of Poughkeepsie, 1 over Rocker Road, Poughkeepsie, New York. Be further resolved that this work is an enforcement proceeding, is a, therefore a type 2 action which is exempt from environmental review under 6 NYC RR 617.5 C29. So moved. Second. second. We got a motion and a second. Any questions on this one? No, but I'm excited. Yeah. And it's just as everybody said, you know, you look at how many years back this was. This was in court for numerous years. First, um, they were being sued by the neighbors. And then um, when we were all done, some of the permits had expired. So then we got sued. And it seemed like the lawsuits were over with now. So now we can take care and cl finally clean this thing up. Yes, people ask about this the most yes. in the third war. Yep. So <laughs> it's something that will be cleaned up finally. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. No. <laughs> the rest is two liquor license Nine notifications. A, we don't really have to read it. Yeah, the rest is liquor license notifications, and then we had a, a, a legal notification. Nine A's and Best Buds for 4 to Taft Avenue B was four point industrial LLC, 29 Woodland, and notification for liquor license we will see was 2001 South Road, and then notification of claim Remsburger versus the town. That brings us to the end of our agenda to make the motion to suspend the rule. Second. Aye. Aye. This is the time if anybody would like to speak. If anybody would like to speak, please, please ask that you limit it to three minutes. Doreen. Hey, thank you. Um, Jay, could you or Mike or somebody um, just give a little more explanation about dial -a ride Was there any services that were, were added or what was, what was no, that about? Were. There was no increase over the last few years, and this year there was actually just an increase in the service in general. Uh, you mean the cost of the service? Correct. Okay. I was wondering if by any chance you had added any um, days or hours or anything, you know, since there's that whole thing where it doesn't operate every day in the town, but it doesn't sound like that's the case. No, the services stayed the same. As I said, with COVID and everything, it didn't increase anything over the last, I think it was three years, if not four. So it, it's going up this year, a small piece. And that came in like a week after the budget that it was actually going up. Well, it would be good in the future if um, the town could take a look at potentially increasing you know, services because there's a lot of people out there who, you know, a lot of seniors in particular who, you know, don't get, have transportation, don't always have um, relatives or friends to take them to uh, appointments. So it would be good to to increase those services. All right, thank you. Thank you, Doreen. Anybody else? Ma'am, come on up. Hi. How are you? How are you? My name is Sarah Samuels. Um, I have a business on College View Avenue on the corner of College View and Fairmont. Um, I've been having some parking issues um, all of the Vassar students and staff have been parking there because they don't have enough parking on campus. Um, I've been at the Arlington Business District meeting. Um, I've spoken, I've called everyone at Vassar. I've sent out emails. I've called the town police. Um, right now, I just drove by in the evening. Um, there's about 25 cars parked out there. There are no businesses open in the evening in that neighborhood. Um, there's two restaurants opening on Fairmont in the next month or two months or so. Um, that are just gonna be open during for lunch as well. Um, I've been monitoring the cars. Um, there's a number of cars, I would say a minimum of 10 that are parking there for just fully a week at a time. They're not moving. I've been putting flyers on the cars. So there's just stacks of flyers. 
So they're staying in the dorms, I'm guessing, living on campus and parking on College View. Well, there's no parking anywhere in the town right now, so they should be getting ticketed. No one's ticketing. I guess no. that they're, I don't know, there's something with the... Well, as of November 1st, April 1st, they should no be. Yes, so they, they should no, be ticketed and moved. Parking spaces off the highway. So there is a sign right there that says November, starting November yeah. 1st, there's no yeah. overnight parking, yeah. but I've been handing well, out, putting we, flyers. We have Captain Cropley listening in. I'm sure he's taking mm -hmm. notes and he'll... Okay, We'll yeah. make sure uh, we get word over to the uh, yeah. traffic sergeant, so, okay? I mean, Vassar College told me that there was plenty of parking on campus, but I just spoke to someone the other that was giving out tickets on campus because the students are also parking in the employee parking lots. Um, he told me they're about to start towing the cars on campus, and he said basically that's just going to cause more, more of the students problem. to park in town parking. Um, so you so, have a college that wants to correct their problem and push it on the town? Yes. Yeah. Basically, I've talked to them many times, and they just tell me, call the town police, yeah. which I've done, but there's no response. No. And they, they've gone out there, and I said, we've, we've talked to them, and Vassar has sent notes out, but as you said, Sarah, it's not going to... How many of those people there are, are you think are actually residents that live here and not just oh. students? Because I don't know, you know, the makeup of going down that street. Yeah, there. I don't know. When I, when I, I mean, I've been. I've, I've seen been, your flyers. You know that, yes. that. Yeah. So what are your I've been looking. They, they just tell them not to park there. She said the cars haven't moved because the flyers don't move. Yeah. yeah. They. Oh, I would say 85 percent of the cars have Vassar parking stickers on the windows as well. Um, I'm sure it's part students, part staff. Um, yeah. And as we said, we spoke at the bid and we discussed it. It's yep. the laziness of the students that yes. want the most convenient park and they're not parking where so, they're supposed to park. But I was told yesterday by someone handing out tickets that there, in fact, is not enough parking on campus. That the South Lot, where they, where Vassar, yeah. people at Vassar keep telling me there's plenty of parking at South Lot. This guy said there is no parking. That's already over full. Um, so, and Vassar did send out an email. I saw the email and they just said, if you don't mind, maybe could you not park? on the street well, that so. sounds forceful yeah so yeah. they you know obviously they, they yeah well they this is mike said um yeah. captain cropley's on here and okay. there there is the winter parking rule so yeah a hundred dollars a ticket is always a nice that yeah and that even during the day i mean i don't know you know at some point especially when the restaurants are open there's going to be no parking no. Mm -hmm. um so i don't know if there can be a solution during the day or you know business parking signs i don't know We'll tell them again. They're also looking to address the, you know, the, the whole deal we discussed, the marking of the tires and all that. You know, yeah. Where that stands. So they're, they're looking at different avenues to try to do that also because okay. there's not a lot of spots in the town. No. You know, people had brought up, and I think it might have been you, is do we put in meters? That's not really what you want because right. the city of Poughkeepsie yeah. did that. That's one of the worst things you can do to chase people away. So yeah. right, you right. want it to be friendly yeah. on top of that. So I think it's just an avenue we have to address more heavily with Vassar. I think to that's do the, it. I mean, yeah. And we just discussed, like, even the construction is a major issue with them now. And mm -hmm. when they go on to the next project, that they will actually have construction parking. And we have to make sure that they actually adhere to that right. to get them there. Because it's slowly lightening up a little bit on, Ray on Raymond Avenue, but it's still pretty heavy there. And the other yeah. thing is the businesses are busy. So as we discussed, and you said, yeah. if yeah. you knew they were all shopping there, it wouldn't be right. an issue. Right. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, hopefully well, something, I mean, something hopefully can be done. Captain Cropley just got back to me. They're sending a car over there now to take care of that. Okay. okay. What's your awesome. business, you, by Robin. the way? Uh, massage therapy. Oh, okay. I'm above Elizabeth Boutique. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I've been there for 11 years. This wasn't a problem until just right before the pandemic and then more recently. Mm -hmm. It's just getting, I'm watching it get worse and worse by the day because it, you know, word must be getting out that you can park there. So. Sarah, didn't you also mm -hmm. bring up that they had to have a meal plan on campus or something, so it makes yeah. them come to campus? that's what yeah. someone, the first person I spoke to at Vassar had told me that the meal plan had changed, so people who lived off campus had to drive in and go there every day for the food. But I don't know if that it's is true really, not. I don't true know. Not, yeah. yeah. And they do have a great cafeteria, so I can understand it's, that. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Well, right. I do know the park is not overnight, so it's midnight until 8 yeah. in the morning. So okay. but we'll, we'll be watching it tonight, okay? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Is there anybody else? Make the motion resume the rules. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Members of the Town Board of Town of Eclipse is hereby adjourned to executive session to consider the following discussion regarding the proposed pending or current litigation, Remsberger claim, and McKinsey opio opioid suit to discuss matters which are exempt under open meaning law including matters subject to attorney client privilege 
to be further resolved that no action appropriating money will be taken in executive or attorney client session. So move. Second. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7-0. Downloaded in executive session 8-19 p.m.